Job 25. And as God uh, puts together time and time again, the message this morning is an adjunct. Is that a good word? To the Sunday school message, Brother Phil Gabbard so el- eloquently preached. And the, the, there's a board over here. You ought to look at that if you get a chance. That kind of tells it how it is, body, soul, and spirit. All right, we're going to be in Job 25 in verse 4. And Job said this. Job said, how then can man be justified with God? And that's a good question. How then can man be justified with God or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, men throughout the ages have asked that question, Lord, how am I going to be just before you, Lord? What can I do, Lord, to face a, a just and holy God and how can I be found just? And this body of flesh is so corrupt, Lord. And you tell us how, Lord. Thank you for your precious word. Thank you for your love. And thank you for our precious Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. As we enter into this season, Lord, the birth of our Savior, Lord. He came to earth and uh, took on the form of a servant and identified with folks like me and uh, like other folks in this room, Lord. He... he felt the burden, our burdens and our sorrows, was touched with the feeling of our infirmities, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for him. Shed his blood and paid the debt I couldn't pay, Lord. Uh, Hold me up today by the power of your might, Lord. And I'll thank you, praise you, give you glory. Help us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I want to look a, a little while this morning. First of all, on what the Bible says about justification. Now, justification has to do with something that uh, conforms to a certain standard. Uh, Jesus Christ set the standard. His holiness is a standard, and how are we going to attain to his standard? And we're just whenever our actions line up with God's righteousness, and it don't always do that. Many times... It don't. Uh, the Bible says that the law, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Yeah, actually, I think that's written. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So God's holy law represented God's standard for righteousness that he gave to the Jew. And uh, the Jew soon found out that they couldn't keep the law that God had given them to keep. They had thought, man, we're going to do it. We're going to serve him now. We've got God's law. We're going to live it. Man, we've got it down. But they found out they couldn't live it. Why do you think so many mental health facilities are full this morning? Because folks are on a guilt trip because they figured out they can't live it in the flesh. You start trying to serve God in the flesh, won't be long, you'll be disappointed. Something will happen, you say, man, I thought I had it together. I thought I was going on for God, and this or that happened. So the Jew soon found out no matter how much he tried, no matter how devout or religious that he strived to be, somewhere along the line, he would break God's law. And then he'd be answerable. He'd be answerable to a holy God, God's righteousness. So what's he going to do? Then what? Well, uh, God required a sacrifice. And when God gave the law along with it, he instituted the law of the sacrifice, the statutes and ordinances that folks, if, if they send a certain sin, they'd have to go down and, and sacrifice to either two turtle doves, a pigeon, a Ram of the first year, it depended upon the sin, but God instituted the ordinances and the statutes concerning the sacrifice. So more important, more important to the Jew than keeping the law, which he found out that he couldn't keep, was the keeping of the sacrifice. I mean, it it should have been. If he kept the sacrifice, he was okay when it came to the law. Now, one of the problems when Christ came is when when Jesus Christ showed up, 
the religious hierarchy, the Pharisees, where they were looking to the letter of the law rather than looking to the sacrifice. But what God looked at was a sacrifice, and God was teaching the Jew about blood atonement. The Bible says in Hebrews 9:22, it says, "In almost all things, by the law, are purged with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no remission." So then in, in Galatians 3:24, Paul said this. He said, "Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified. There's that justification. We might be justified by faith." Not justified by keeping the law. Romans 3.20, Paul said this. He said, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. That law was given so the Jew uh, might recognize that he couldn't keep it. Paul said, I had not known lust, except the law said, thou shalt not covet. And it becomes a schoolmaster to lead us to Jesus Christ. I remember as a young uh, man when I got saved, uh, those Sunday school teachers were teaching God's law. They teach those Ten Commandments. And and those commandments begin to reveal, God's law began to reveal his holiness to me. And also at the same time, it began to reveal me in relationship to God's holiness. And I saw that I was a mess. The Bible says, the goodness of God leadeth thee to the repentance. So what happened, that law became a a schoolmaster to me to lead me to my Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Now that verse said that I just read, that you can't be just no matter how religious, how many uh, uh, religious things that you do and how perfect that you think you are, The Bible says Abraham was just before men. He had whereof the glory before men, but not before God. See, uh, when when judgment day comes, comes, it's not going to be you and and your neighbors on what they think, what kind of man you were. It's going to be you and a holy God. Your life lines up against God's holiness, and we'll see that there's only one way to attain God's holiness and his righteousness. But those Old Testament sacrifices, they could never take away sins. The sin debt was still still hanging there no matter uh, how many bulls and goats they sacrificed and how many birds and pigeons and whatever animal they sacrificed, the debt was still standing. All that was was a little interest. Debt still standing in full. It hadn't been paid for. That's why in the Old Testament, man had a guilty conscience. No matter what sacrifices he would do, it says there was a remembrance of sin from year to year. For the blood of bulls and goats said it couldn't clear the guilty. The debt had never been paid. They'd been covered. God held them judicially blameless because they did what God told them to do. But only... One way for justification, and that's through the just and righteous Savior. My, my, my. Those Old Testament sacrifices could never take away sins. It says in Hebrews 10, 4, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. All right, so with all that being said, in every age... Uh, any person who is honest with himself or herself will recognize your lost condition. God will bring a man to repentance. Hopefully, if you're interested in finding God, he'll bring you to a point of repentance. Remember that prodigal son? He was so down and out, said when he came to himself, God will put things in your life that will make you come to yourself. I was talking to a, a, a lady this week and, and her boyfriend. Her boyfriend just went back to jail and may be there for a long time. And I talked to her boyfriend about three months ago and asked him about God. He says he wasn't into all of that. But this girl said she'd been praying for him and praying for him, so now he's facing a long stint in jail. Who knows what God's going to do with him? God may have put him in jail again just to bring him to a point where he could deal with him and let him recognize 
that he needs a savior. So Job asked in our text, he said, How then can a man be justified with God, or how can he be clean that is born of woman? Now earlier, Job had written in Job 9.20, he said this. He said, If I justify myself, mine own mouth shall condemn me. If I say I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. You know, the prophet Isaiah came to the same conclusion over in Isaiah 6, 5. He said, then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Who said that? Maybe the greatest prophet that ever lived. Said I, woe is me, I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. When you finally see him, folks, you'll come to the realization that Compared to him, you've got a ways to go. Mm. Paul said this, he said, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. You've got to watch out when you, when you think you have arrived. The Bible says to take heed, just when a man thinks he stand, just when you think you stand, lest you fall. Take heed, folks. That flesh is a bear, it's a rascal, and it'll disappoint you, and it'll show up when you least expect it. Peter fell down at Jesus' knees one day and he declared, I am a sinful man. All of them, all those folks that I mentioned, they knew and understood that nothing they could do could ever justify them before a holy God. All right, justification. Noah Webster said about justification, he said, in theology, remission of sin and absolution from guilt and punishment or an act of free grace by which God pardons the sinner and accepts him as righteous on account of the atonement of Christ. That was Noah Webster. That's not a new modernist dictionaries. That was a Bible believer named Noah Webster who wrote that. Paul said this in Romans 3, 26, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and watch it, the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Isaiah 53, 11, to our heavenly Father, when the Lord uh, died, was dying on the cross, he, he looked up when he had paid that sin debt, he said, it is finished. And of the Father, it says here in Isaiah 53, 11, he shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied, shall be satisfied by his knowledge, shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities not just a pardon but a payment the debt wasn't forgiven it was paid for our sins are forgiven but the debt to God was paid for by his precious son Jesus Christ but he whom God raised again saw no corruption it says in Isaiah uh, or correction, Acts 13, 37. Then it said, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him, watch it, all that believe are justified from all things. Man, it's hard to get a legalist to, re- to quote that verse. I'll read it again. And by him, all that believe. It don't say all that do this and A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. All that keep the sacraments and keep the commandments. It don't say all that. It says, and by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not, you could not be justified by the law of Moses. All right, now turn with me to Job 5. John, correction, John 5. John 5, 22. Talking about judgment, the Bible says in John 5, 22, for the Father judgeth no man. Here it is, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. What's that about? Heavenly Father, we come to you today in Jesus' name. All this we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. 
A fellow says, preacher, well, I, I know all that. Man, I, I got saved. I, I did what the Bible said to do. I'm, I, I know I'm saved. I don't have a problem with that. But what do I do now? I mean, after you understand God's justification through the blood of Jesus Christ, and, and that it's tied to what Jesus did, not what you've done, What do I do now? Well, what, it, what is God's expectation for me now that I'm justified through the blood of Christ? Does God expect anything of, of me? Now, you've got to watch. There's a, a subtle difference now between expectation and hope. When someone hopes for something, it's normally for something favorable. It's going to have a favorable conclusion. Now, expectation is dependent on a bunch of variables based on your choices on what you can expect. You see the difference? There's a difference. I remember seeing a TV program, one of those uh, jail shows where the guy's getting out of prison. Been several years in prison, and the interviewer asked him, said, well, well, what did you learn from your years in prison? And he said this, I learned that if I always do what I always did, I'm going to always get what I always got. Hey, Christian, you may have got saved, but listen, if you always continue to do what you always did, you're going to continue to get what you always got. God expects there's some expectation based upon some choices you make. If you expect to have some prayers answered and hope to have some prayers answered, if you expect some blessings in life, you hope for some blessings in life, then you need to do it God's way. You don't roll over and play dead just because you got saved. A lot of folks get saved and they lay out of church. They won't read their Bible. They won't pray. They won't do anything that, that, that God tells them to do. And they wonder why they're not being blessed. What's that about? You're saved because of the blood. Christ took care of that. So Christ, uh, as far as the sin is concerned, Jesus Christ met every expectation of his heavenly Father on the cross. He was a holy and proper sacrifice without spot, without blemish, holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. That's our sacrifice, Jesus Christ. But if you're saved, then it begs the question, what, then what? What do I do now? The Bible says that Jesus Christ became the end of the law for righteousness. So our righteousness before God is found in Jesus Christ. But how about our witness? What are we going to be? What, are we going to be anything for God? Uh, he took my place as far as justification goes, but now what about God's expectation for my life as a child of God, what God would like to see? Let me put it that way. Uh, uh, turn to Romans chapter 12. Along with, with, with what God would like to see, he gives us a formula for what he terms as reasonable service. Now, uh, we'll look at this. Most Christians look at this passage and they say, man, that's... That, that's that's way over, over the top. Romans 12, 1. Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, watch it, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Man, are you kidding? Man, who can, who can do that? A, a living sacrifice. Hey, welcome to God's world. What what he do for you? He gave up, gave up everything for you. His precious son, the most important thing to him, he gave for you. Hey, God is not a God don't want to be next to whatever else you got going in life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He's not next. Well, Lord, uh, uh, I want to follow you, but first I, I've got to go bury my father, uh, and, and then, but you're next. And, and Lord, <laughs> uh, I've got to go prove. I've got some, uh, some oxen I've got to go prove, but then you're next after that. And, Lord, I just married a wife, and, I, and boy, she's got a lot of needs, Lord, but you're, you're next. 
Mm. That makes us kind of feel kind of, makes me feel kind of a little dirty. I'm just haven't done all those things that God would like to see me to do. But you know what? It's, t- it's tied to my prayer life the power in my prayer life. It's tied to my blessings. It's tied to crowns that I can win. I don't want to be hard. Expectation based on a lot of variables and choices that you and I make. Expectation is what you expect based upon what you choose to do. That makes sense. You choose to stay away from the Bible, stay away from prayer, stay away from church. You choose to accept your salvation without ever trying to fall in love with Jesus Christ. Your expectation is going to be different than someone who really jumps in and wants to serve God and wants to Please God, wants to do things for God. Mm. Jesus Christ, save your soul. You've got a wonderful hope for a life of righteous living with a blessing of God that goes with that. But if you get saved and then by choice you continue to do what you always did, then you can expect to get what you always got. You'll get the same thing a lost man gets whenever you you just go on living like you'd never found the Savior, Jesus Christ. And There's power in salvation. There's power in the Word of God. Brother Phil talked about this morning, the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. No peace, no joy without God in your life. Very few blessings. You know, God, God told the, the Israelites, his chosen people, and he loved them, but he said, you've limited the Holy One of Israel. Man, I've wanted to bless you so many times, but you just wouldn't let me. You wouldn't let me. Mm-mm-mm. You get saved or have been saved, and you choose to continue to do it the old way. See, the Bible says all things become new. You're a new creature in Christ. And it becomes sowing and reaping as a child of God. You can sow to the Spirit or you can sow to the flesh. But God has more to, for you if you just yield to Him, live for Him. You've got God's justification through Jesus Christ. And you've got uh, God's expectation that If you present your body a living sacrifice, you're going to be blessed by God. I expect that. If I do my best to live for God, I expect God to bless me because I I see it coming. He tells me that he'll do that. If I I refuse to do that, if I choose to just continue on in sin, I can expect some chastisement from God. I mean, it's a normal expectation. Okay? Uh, Now, how how do you get where God wants you to, to be? How do you get there? Uh, Your soul and spirit were separated from your body of flesh the moment you got saved. We saw that. Brother Phil uh, dealt with that this morning. But you never seem to allow Christ in you to control the rest of you. He talked about that in Sunday school. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 4, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Hey, I didn't say that. I just read it is all I did. How about this one? Uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Who my, every thought. How about Romans 8, 29? For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, watch it, to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Hmm. So then your justification, justification depends on what you do with Jesus Christ. You either accept him or you reject him. John 3, 36, the Bible says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, 
but the wrath of God abideth on him. Acts 13, 39, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So then your expectation depends on what you do for Jesus Christ. Your justification, what you do with Jesus Christ, your expectation on what you do for him. You live for him, you can expect some, some blessings from God. Does that make sense? You'll be blessed. 11, Hebrews eleven six says, For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, watch it, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We use that for our prayer life, but that works for, for life in general. You diligently seek God, you can expect that he'll reward you for your diligence. You live for God, present your body a living sacrifice, you'll be blessed by God. Okay, we've talked about the expectation, we've talked about justification. Now your sanctification depends on what you do through Jesus Christ. Justification, what you do with Jesus Christ. Expectation on what you do for Jesus Christ. Your sanctification depends on what you do through Jesus Christ. He must increase and I must decrease. You let him control your life. He says, draw nigh unto God and I will draw nigh unto you. Leviticus 20 and verse 7, sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy for I am holy. Fall in love with God. You fall in love with God, the Bible says he'll manifest himself to you. Fall in love with the Lord. Find some sanctification through your love for your Savior. The Bible says that he is the lover of your soul. Do you love him? Do you love him enough to try to do it God's way? Or is it with you, is it always, well, you're next, God. I mean, I got this going on and that going on, but God, you're next. I got you, I got you down over here. I've got you on my list. <laughs> Where are you at this morning? I don't mean to be mean to you. Just trying to help you, help you to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior. Everyone stand up this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never found the justification that comes only through Jesus Christ. How do you get justified? By stepping out by faith and trusting in what Jesus Christ did for you in your place on Calvary's cross. Have you ever done that? Are you justified before God? That's all taken care of by Jesus Christ. The altar's open this morning. Maybe there's a burden on your heart. Maybe someone you need to pray for. For whatever reason, won't you come as we sing?